Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, today I'm going to start a subject that's rather near and dear to my heart. And that's because my family comes from a long line of engineers. My father was a mechanical engineer. My grandfather was a civil engineer. My brother is a nuclear maritime engineer. And as a result of that, I've always had a lot of interest in the history of engineering. And nothing talks about the history of engineering more than this item right here. This is called a slide rule. It is an analog computer, and it basically was the badge of a mid-20th century engineer, just like a pocket protector, a white shirt, a skinny black tie, and a crew cut. Now, one thing that I really like about slide rules is that unlike a modern calculator, such as this one on my iPhone, you have to actually understand the numbers and the mathematics behind a slide rule in order to use it. Now, the problem that you run into with calculators is you can get an answer very quickly, but you can also get a wrong answer very quickly and not realize why it's wrong. With a slide rule, you have to actually know what you're doing. It's kind of fun to do once you understand what you're doing, and it gives you a true appreciation for the relationship between numbers, which is something that we're sorely lacking nowadays. So let's get going. There are several parts to a slide rule. The first part is the body of the slide rule, which does not move. Then, of course, you have the slide in the middle. Then you have a movable piece of plastic or glass called a cursor. And on that cursor, you'll have what's called a hairline, which helps you line up numbers. Now, the way the slide rule operates is that you have two rulers that are the same length. And by moving one ruler on top of the other, you can add things together. And in this case, what we're adding is logarithms. For example, here we see the two on what's called the D scale of the slide rule. And we've placed the one on the C scale directly above it. By going out to two on the C scale, we multiply two by two and get our resulting answer of four. Likewise, we can multiply two by three and come up with the answer of six. For four by two, there's eight. Division is exactly the opposite. What we'll do with division is we'll take the number that we are dividing something into and put that on the bottom scale, or the, the scale on the stator, in this case, the D scale. And then what we're doing to it, we will put directly above it. So, for example, in this case, we're dividing 5 by 2. Then we read back to the index, which is the one on the C scale, and we get our answer, which is 2.5. Now, the accuracy of a slide rule is given in something called significant digits. A standard slide rule is 10 inches long, and it is good to about three significant digits. For quick calculations on the fly, we can use a pocket slide rule, and that's five to six inches long, and it's good to two to three significant digits. If you need a little bit more accuracy, you use a big 20-inch monster like this one. This is an Aristo Studio 1068, and it is good to three to four significant digits. And then, of course, if you really need insane accuracy, up to five significant digits, you use one of these. This is a fuller calculator. It has a scale on it not measured in inches, but measured in feet. This has a spiral scale around this drum that's 41 feet long, and it's good to five significant digits. We're going to learn all about all of these slide rules and the scales on them in future episodes.